Lucy Fraser. Good morning, Lucy. Now, has Sir Kia ruffled some feathers on your camp in Westminster? Good morning. Hi, good morning. I wouldn't put it like that. What I would say is it shows uh, Keir Starmer's uh, approach generally, which is he says what he thinks is appropriate to the audience that he's speaking to. So in the Telegraph, he thinks it's appropriate to uh, talk about Margaret Thatcher. But when he was standing to be the leader, he thought it was appropriate to uh, support and highlight the successes of Jeremy Corbyn. When he was in Europe, he thought it was sensible to say that we were going to align uh, more closely with Europe and came back to the UK and said uh, the exact opposite. I think what we, we are seeing is that Keir Starmer says what he thinks people want to hear. And we don't really know what he stands for at all. Uh, Lucy, welcome to the talk today. Lovely to have you on. Thank you for your time. Um, there's a really interesting point for me because... Um, We've been through politicians and prime ministers who seem to have charisma and bring people, you know, to them. You have a choice at the next election by two pretty dour, technically-based people. You make a point there about Starmer and flip-flopping. Um, the British people, I think, at the next election are going to look at a country that is suffering in many ways, an NHS that's creaking, education problems, the war in the Middle East, energy bills, all sorts of stuff. And yet it strikes me, Lucy, and I could be wrong, that, that each of these leaders every two or three days throws out... Uh, another policy that they promise is going to change. And it leads me to, to ask one thing. Why is it a perfect storm? Why has it taken so long? Why is everything seemingly in this country at this moment not going very well for, for any of us, to be fair? Um, well, I do think there are things that are going well. We have been through some very, very challenging times. Yep. Uh, we've been through a pandemic. Uh, we've been through two wars. These are issues that are affecting countries across the world. But I think it's important that people judge the next uh, prime minister and the next government and vote in accordance with whether we've delivered and what our plans are. And we've delivered uh, the Conservative government, the Prime Minister has delivered a halving of inflation. And that's what really matters to people. That's the economy, making but, but sure Lucy, that the I'm cost not, of I'm not living is down. I'm not disagreeing with you, but and I get that. And I I'm actually, I understand that if you want the economy, green shoots and all that, you need to halve inflation. The problem that you've got, apart from the fact you're 20% behind in the polls, is convincing people in a very short space of time after 13 years, I'm sure you You'd agree with this that you are the people to trust going forward you say about delivery yes inflation but you haven't sorted out the immigration problem there are many many issues in this country and, and i take you on to rwanda i'd love your take on this i'm not i, I don't want to get into a debate about the supreme court and the echr even if you create the answer with rwanda you're talking about 500 people and there's 170,000. why doesn't any politician stand up and say I'm going to change the Home Office, it's not fit for purpose, and get this done for the British people. Well, if I could just challenge you slightly on that, because we have taken steps on illegal immigration, those small boat crossings, uh, with some considerable success. So everyone said that they would go up. In fact, those small boat crossings have gone down by a third, uh, over a third, because of the actions that the Prime Minister and the government have taken. Um, and of course, we are uh, moving forward with our Rwanda plan. And what's really clear is that the Labour Party doesn't have a plan in relation to the small boats at all. So if people are concerned about immigration, Yes, it's challenging. Yes, it's difficult. Uh, but we are, A, committed to doing it, and, B, have already made significant progress. Lucy, Illegal immigration down by a third. Lucy, it's been um, 140... And other... Thus far, the Rwanda plan has cost £140 million. There's talk of either today or tomorrow, James Cleverley offering a further £15 million. Pounds. What's your estimate of how much this is going to cost per person? Well, what we know is that illegal immigration costs a considerable amount, millions of pounds on a day-to-day -day basis here. And that's why we need to, to uh, make sure that we take steps to stop those people crossing those boats. And what the Rwanda plan is about is about a deterrence. We want to stop people making those journeys, which are difficult and dangerous for them, uh, giving money to criminal uh, people smugglers um, and uh, ensuring that we cannot control our borders. That's why we've got this plan. This isn't about millions of people going to Rwanda. This is about people understanding that if they do make that journey, that they won't come to this country at all, which is what they want to do 
they'll go to Rwanda instead. I, I guess, I guess, from my point of view, Lucy, and we'll, we'll agree, not, not even disagreeing, I, I don't believe that it can be this complicated and have taken so long, and I'm not taking a political side on that. I, I, I go back to my point. There's 170,000 people waiting to be processed who are, because they're either here or waiting, are costing this country money. Can I just bring you on very quickly as the uh, Culture Secretary? Uh, BBC licence fee, Nadine Doris, uh, who, who was in your role some, some years ago, works on this station now. Uh, it's been frozen for two years, it's about to rise. You would imagine that I would be saying the BBC needs to justify itself a lot more. I don't really want to be giving £170 for what they pump out now. But what do you, what do you believe is a realistic rise, Lucy? Uh, well, we're really concerned uh, with the cost of living. We want to make sure that people can afford their bills. That's why we froze the licence fee for two years. It is due to rise uh, with inflation, but as a government, we want to make sure that it rises by an amount that people uh, can afford, and that's something that I'm looking at uh, very much at the moment. And, Lucy, just sticking with the licence fee for a second, never mind the financial cost, is there anything that you're going to put into place that stops... Um, elderly people, vulnerable people, having knocks on their door, being chased for the licence fee and, and threats of, of, of further punishment. Uh, the the licence fee does need to looking at overall. The media landscape is changing. People are not paying their licence fee, not just because they're watching and they're refusing to pay, but they're just not simply watching the BBC and renewing their licence fee. They lost 400,000 licence fee payers this year alone. So I'm looking overall at what can we do to really make sure the licence fee is fair and affordable and how can we support the BBC to make sure that it's funding settlement and the way it gets paid. Uh, it, it works for the BBC. See, that's a broad review that I'm looking at. And in response to your particular question about the criminalisation of people for not paying their licence fee, that is not something that I think is appropriate and something that I will be looking at at the next Charter review. Uh, very, here, here. very quickly also, yeah. Well, the, the, women's football's uh, been highlighted today, a report uh, from an ex-player which you've embraced. Tell us about that briefly, if you could be so kind. Uh, I'd love to. The Lionesses uh, are amazing and uh, left a massive legacy after the Euros, winning the Euros last year and getting to the semi-final of the World Cup in Australia this year. And I was really pleased to go out to Australia and, and see them in that final. Uh, they are at the top of their game, but we need to support them as a government. The FA needs to support them if they continue to be, to ensure that they continue to be professional and world leading. So after the Euros, we asked Karen Carney, uh, who was a lioness, to do a review about how do we achieve that? How do we ensure that the women's game remains professional? How do we support it? She, she, uh, she published that review and we're responding to it today. The government is accepting all of the 10 recommendations. Not only that, we have started putting in place some of her recommendations already. Uh, that would be along the lines of you know, equal access to sport for girls in school, building pitches across the country. We've already built 2,200 pitches across the country. And last week, I announced, I went to the, one of the Lioness's training sessions last week and announced £30 million uh, for specific pitches where women will have priority access because we want to make sure that the women's team, which are on the cusp of something very exciting, we want to ensure that we continue that so they can become um, even better than they are today. Lucy, thank you. Just a very quick question and a very quick answer. Can you draw back a 20-point deficit to the Labour Party in the next nine months? Yes. I love the positivism. Thank you very much indeed, <laughs> Lucy Fraser. Uh, very brilliant. Thank very you. honest. Thank you so much. Stood there on College Green, not a worry in the world.